Hey, my friends, I got one more quick friction problem for you here before we leave the friction chapter, and that's a problem of belt friction. This is actually not something I cover in my class. It's kind of one of those extra sections, but I figure some of you may do it, so I thought I'd throw one quick video at you to kind of show you how to do that, okay? So belt friction is when you have, instead of, normally we don't, we don't even calculate friction on pulleys, right? The rope goes over it and the pulley moves with the rope and there's no friction, right? They're perfectly frictionless pulleys. Well, in belt friction, pretty much what you're going to get is that sliding pulley or that sliding friction. So if I have a, a pulley and I had a rope going around, let's say the pulley gets stuck. Then the pulley, as the rope goes around, that pulley has to slide across that pulley. Well, there's some friction there. Uh, how do you calculate what that's going to be? So let's look at this little problem here. Look how nice my little people are I drew, okay? Well, they're not that good. But anyway, the, the lady up here has no neck. I don't know what happened to her. Maybe if we got rid of that line right there, she would have a neck again. There you go, lady. Fixed. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Esmeralda, and she's trying to pick up Cliff here. Now, Cliff is hanging over the precipice. <laughs> okay, and Cliff weighs 100 pounds, okay? So clearly, Cliff is a boy because, you know, he's not 200 pounds. You have to be 200 to be a man, so... So anyway, she's trying to pull this little boy up the cliff here, and we want to know what force, right? What is the force required to begin to raise cliff with the rope? Mu sub s equals 0.2 for the rock edge. Now you'll notice that the rock edge here, I don't know what happened, but it's a perfect quarter of a circle. It's a miracle, okay? So the contact, where the rope is actually contacting the cliff, goes from here to here. Okay, and that, boom, boom, is a right angle. Okay, so it's a quarter of a circle where it's contacting the cliff. Okay, now we have a new equation for belt friction. You have to remember this equation over here. Okay, and you got two things. You got tension one and tension two. Now you have to decide which one of these is tension one and tension two. There's tension in the rope here, and there's tension in the rope there. Now, definitely, those two tensions are going to be different. I know the tension in the rope here is going to be 100, isn't it? It's got to be, okay? Because if I look at a free body diagram of that rope, i got 100 going down, so the rope has to be 100 going up. But what about that rope over there? Well, it's going to be 100 plus the amount of friction where it's dragging over the rock there. So it's going to be 100 plus the, the amount that friction is contributing to the tension in the rope. So this one's gonna be, this is gonna be, let's just say greater than 100, right? I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be more than 100. Now here's the little secret of the day, okay? If you put in this equation, these two values, right? Let's say you put 100 here and, and uh, you're solving for T1. Well, I know that if I pick that for T1 and it comes out to be 73, then I know that I pick these two things backwards, right? I know that, and there's only one, that if you work this backwards, you're going to get a number smaller. If you work it the right way, you're going to get a number bigger, okay? So I know that when I pick that, I need to get a bigger number for that T up there, right? So I know that. So let me tell you about T1 and T2. T2 is the force that opposes the motion. T1 is the force in the direction of the motion. Okay, so when she starts to raise Cliff, where's Cliff going? Well, hopefully... Cliff is going this way, okay? So that is the direction of the motion. Do you agree? Okay. So Cliff, what's he doing? He's opposing the direction of the motion because Cliff's weight, whoop, is acting down, isn't it? So Cliff is opposing the motion, so he is T2, isn't he? The 100 is going to be the T2. The T1 is going to be up there at the top. That's what Esmeralda is going to have to be pulling up there. So let's see if we can solve this by plugging those numbers into our equation. So T1 is up here. This is T1. This is T2. All right, so T1 is what we're looking for is equal to 100 times E to the, okay, the uh, coefficient of static friction, 0.2 for the edge of the rock there, so 0.2, and then times beta. What is beta? Well, beta is just the angle of contact, okay? So it would be this angle right here, okay? Now, when you see an angle with no sine, no cosine in front of it, no trig function at all, then what do you have to do there? 
you got to remember that now beta needs to be in radians, okay? This is the angle in radians, okay? In radians, got to be. So what do we have here? 90 degrees, let's see. 180 degrees is pi, so 90 degrees is pi over 2, isn't it? Okay? So let's put that in our calculator. Mr. Calculator, you all have an E button on your calculator? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to do this 100 and then E to the, I better put parentheses, 0.2 times pi divided by 2 parentheses equals 136.9. So T1, 136.9 pounds, okay? So that's how hard Esmeralda is going to have to pull to lift, Cliff, to lift Cliff up, okay? He's got his 100 pounds, plus there's another 36 pounds worth of resistance for the friction here. That's how hard she's going to pull. Okay, so what if I turn this around on you? Okay, just before Cliff starts to be lowered, or in order, in order for Esmeralda to hold Cliff in equilibrium, how much weight does she have to hold on the rope? Well... Now the motion wants to go the other way. So the only thing that changes is now Cliff is going to be T1 and Esmeralda is going to be T2, okay? So just to hold him in equilibrium, it's going to be this, right? Uh, let's see, 100 is equal to um, is equal to T2, well, yeah, she's T2, uh, times E, so the same thing, right? 0.2 times pi over 2. So now it's 100 divided by 100 divided by, I'm going to put this all in parentheses, e to the 0.2 times pi divided by 2 parentheses, big close parentheses, equals 73.04. So there you go. So in that case, Esmeralda now, to keep him in equilibrium, to keep him from falling down, just to hold him in place, has to hold less than his weight. Why is that? Because some of his weight is supported by this friction up here, okay? So she's got to pull 136.9 to raise him, or 73.04 pounds to keep him uh, in equilibrium. So that's how you use the belt friction equation. It's pretty simple. The only trick is remember that that angle right there needs to be in radians. But other than that, pretty straightforward. Okay, gang, that wraps up chapter eight. I'll see you on the next video.